Thank you for tuning in to today's service from Elm Grove Baptist Church. As we continue to move forward through this uncertain time, we're excited about being able to provide videos of each service here at Elm Grove Baptist. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and don't forget to share our videos as they're available not only on YouTube, but Facebook, as well as our newly remodeled website. Thank you again, and please enjoy today's service. psalm of hope and peace and joy and happiness instruction it uh, reaches down deep into your soul and teaches you let's look at it together today in the short lesson today on our Sunday school here I'm glad you're here with us today the Bible says the Lord is my shepherd let's bow our heads in prayer please father we thank you so much that you are our shepherd. Help us to serve you as, as we 
should, and we know how. Teach us what you would have us to know. May we lean upon you and, your, and understand what you want us to do day in and day out. Heavenly Father, help us during this troubled time, time of uncertainty, time when people are worried or scared. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will help them through this as they rely upon you. And maybe it is, dear Lord, that you are causing this to happen in our country, that the United States of America would get on its knees and pray and seek your face. It may be that you are shutting things down so that we'll take time out to listen and to see how easy it is for you to stop things if you want them stopped. So we're at your mercy and we're glad that you love us. Teach us what you would have us to know in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Notice David in that particular first verse wants everybody to know that he has a personal relationship with his God. The Lord, that's his God. That's who he serves, the Lord. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd. Notice the word my. He wants it to be personal. He wants it to be personal with you. Here he is, king of Israel. Here he is, the richest man on earth, the most popular man, but yet he takes time out to realize that God is his Lord and that it's personal with him. The Lord is my shepherd. The question I ask you, is the Lord your shepherd? Does he lead you, guide you, direct you through life? That's what a shepherd does, you know. They say that a pastor is a shepherd. My job is to lead the people. Not to be a dictator, but to lead them, to love them, to direct them, to keep them from going in the wrong places and doing the wrong things, to keep them safe. That's my job as a shepherd. Well, the Lord is our shepherd. He's there to teach us and to guide us and keep us from going to the wrong places. I pray he's your shepherd today. Notice what David says. He says, I shall not want. David says, God gives me everything I need. I don't need anything. I shall not want. I'm not in want. God takes care of me as he will you. As he will anybody who trusts in the Lord Jesus Christ. We realize that God will meet every need that we have. And supply everything that we need. Even in this time when we can't do nothing. Well, I'm telling you right now, I mean, that most people go stir crazy out there. People want to know what can do. Everybody, you can't watch a baseball game, there's not on any. You can't go to the movie shows, you can't do anything, regardless if you go to them or not. A lot of people don't go to the movie shows. There's not much out there to go to, I'll guarantee you that. But whatever you do that you like to do, you can do. You know why? Because you're shut down. And God is teaching us something we need us to know, okay? I'm not going to want for nothing. I'm doing the same thing I always do. I go to church. I'm in church every day, just like today. Now, I'll tell you what, I walk with doing all these here videos and things like this and, and putting it out there. I'm in a suit and tie more now than I normally am. And But the, it's a strange thing, though, preaching out there to nobody. I got one fellow out here listening to everything I'm saying right now. He's our director. He's directing these things. But you know what? Preaching to one person is not like preaching to a crowd. I can't hear an amen. I hope somebody gives me an amen out there today. Uh, because I want you to know, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And if he's your shepherd, you shall not want either. He maketh me to lie down. Now, notice that word maketh in this lesson. God sometimes has to make you Lay down. What's he doing right now to us? He's making us lay down. He's making us stop, look, and listen. He's making us do what he wants us to do. Sometimes in a big hurry up world, big fast paced world, good night in the morning, it's just have people die of heart attacks because of the pressure on them. Rush, rush, rush. Well, you can't rush so much then because he's made you to lay down. 
I think when he says that, a lot of times, I want you to think about this too. He wants you to obey him. He maketh you to lay down. Do you ever have to make your kids obey? Do you ever have to do that? Sometimes they just don't want to do it on their own. You have to make them obey, and you're not going to, they're not going to be able to do anything until they obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. He maketh us to lie down, maybe teaching us here how to obey. Notice this it says here, lie down in green pastures. Underline that, green pasture. You know what that means to me? He wants us to have the good life. I mean, good night when the sheep. You, when you're shepherding sheep, man, they want the green grass. They want that good stuff, good life. That's what God wants for you, a good life. A happy-go-lucky life. I'm going to preach a sermon here one of these days pretty soon on why I'm so happy. People ask the question over again, why, brother, see, are you so happy all the time? I'm happy because I got something to be happy about. Jesus is my Savior, heaven is my home. Can't hardly wait to get up there and see all those I, I miss so much. He leadeth me. Notice what the Bible says here in Psalms 23. He leadeth me. Well, you know what? God leads, we follow. I tell people here at the church, listen, trust me. I want the best for the church. I am not the best pastor the world has ever known. But I love my people. If they'll follow me, I'll lead them in the right direction. We need, first of all, make sure that we're headed in the right direction when it comes to heaven. We need to follow the Lord. Follow, follow, follow God. The Bible says that you'll pick up your cross daily and follow him. That's what I want him. That's what I want to do. Follow him. I want you to follow him. I want the church to follow him. Now, right now, I think God wants you, everybody out there to follow him. Notice it says beside the still waters. I think he wants you to have it. You know, have you ever just gone someplace and just sat down in a peaceful when you hear the water running? And uh, he wants you to have a beautiful life, peaceful life. The still waters. He wants you to be still and know that he is God. Still waters. Notice he says here, he restoreth my soul. Well, you, call, you know, your soul salvation, that's the number one thing. But, you know, as we go through life, you know, it's always good to have encouragement. He needs to refresh us. That's why you have revival meetings. That's why you have mission conferences. That's why you have prayer meetings. So your soul can be restored or refreshed, if you please. And um, that's what God does for you. When he's your shepherd and you follow him and he leads you, he'll refresh you. And that's what we need today, a refreshment. In fact, he wants us to sit down and read your Bible. By the way, you guys, when you got time out, right now, because you can't go to work, or you can't do nothing else, take time out to go read what God wants you to hear from him. He wants you to know something from him. He wants to teach you something. Today, go sit down and listen and read your Bible. Turn off the TV. Turn off everything and take the holy book and read it and see what God has for you today. Take time out to have your soul restored. He restores my soul. He leads me to righteousness. Now here it is, ladies and gentlemen. I think one thing God wants us to learn today is how to live right. Righteousness, right living. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to know what is right. There's a lot of things out there going on in our world is wrong. That's what got God's attention. You don't think for one minute that he doesn't know what's going on down here. The eyes of the Lord, the Bible says, run to and fro throughout all the earth. He sees what's going on. He knows 
whether or not you're living right or not. Well, if he's your shepherd, he leads you unto righteousness or right living. That's what he wants for you. Right decision making. Ladies and gentlemen, I fear for America. I fear for the world as far as that goes. I fear for a lot of people because of the decisions that they make. Sure, this is a life of choosing, a life of choice, but we're making wrong choices. And God knows it. God has taught us in his book, if you will read it. And we got time to do that now. If we will read it, he'll show you and teach you how to make right decisions. When we go through life and we choose in this world today to kill an innocent baby. Have you ever read your Bible and people, they, they're taught by people that are evil, I believe, that you can take the life of a baby because it's not a baby, it's a fetus. Now, it's three months, it's a fetus if they want to kill it. But if a plane crashes with a, month, a mother that's three months pregnant, all of a sudden it's no longer a fetus. It's a baby. You see, when Elizabeth met with Mary, and Mary told Elizabeth that she was pregnant with the Christ child, Elizabeth, pregnant with John the Baptist, the Bible says that the baby leaped in her womb. Didn't call it a fetus, called it a baby. Today we're making wrong choices that are hurting our country. You see, God Bless America was a song that Kate Smith sang that revived America after World War II. God bless America. Well, God can't bless America if we make and choose to do the wrong thing. The 23rd Psalm makes it clear. He leads us unto righteousness in His name. We want to make sure that we do everything in His name. We pray in Jesus' name. We ask for things in Jesus' name. We want Jesus to help us. Boy, when Jesus walked this earth, they wanted Him to help them. They cried out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me, said the blind Barnabas. Have mercy on me. He knew, and they knew, and the people knew, as they crowded the streets, there was someone named Jesus who could help them. You know why? Because he leads us in the righteousness. Because he's our shepherd. And that's his job, to lead us to do right. The Bible says in verse number four, if you'll look there with me, please, I want to read it to you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. There's something else about our Savior and our shepherd. He's with us through life. I'll go with you, even unto the end of the world, he says. He's with us. He's our shepherd. I'm glad I got somebody that walks beside me, takes care of me. He guides us through the hard times, the good times. He's the God of the mountain. He's the, he's the God of the valley. No matter if you're going through some tough times, he's always there with you. You can always depend on him. Yea, don't walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The Bible says, I will fear no evil. You know, when God was this with you, look, I've been criticized for years and years and years, class, for being a preacher. People think I, 
I'm holier now. I'm not holier now. I've never been that way in my life. I, there's, I'm just a sinner saved by God's amazing grace. But I'll tell you what, there's evil people out there that don't like preachers because they tell their wives or they tell their husbands or they tell their children to get saved and to live right and to act right and to be right. I've had beer cans put in my mailbox out here. One day I walked out there and there was a serpent, a snake in my mailbox. Dirty magazines they put. But you know what? I walk with God, I fear no evil. For my shepherd is with me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the privilege, the advantage that you have when Christ is your shepherd. Oh, my goodness. I will fear no evil. Not worried. Not worried. I think of the story of the old preacher, Dr. John R. Rice, who was in an elevator one time. He got into an elevator, and uh, the old saint of God was sitting there when two guys stepped in the elevator and took a gun and put it to the old preacher's head and said, Give me all your money, old man. Dr. John Rice looked him in the face and started laughing. He said, what are you trying to do? Scare me with heaven? You can't do it. I'm sure those guys, when they left that elevator, thought he was crazy. But you know the truth of the matter was? He knew who his shepherd was, and he feared no evil. Look at verse number five, if you would please, with me. The Bible also says this. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. You see, in the last part of verse 4, it talks about how much the shepherd will comfort you. Look, I got all the comfort in the world. I've lived so many years on this earth, I know one of these days I'm going to die and go to heaven. Thank the Lord. But I also know this. He has blessed me. He has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies, my friends, and my neighbors. He's anointed me. And I'd rather be in God's family than in any family in the world. But the last part of this verse, this chapter, I guess I should say, is this. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me and they have. God's been merciful to me. He's been good to me. And he's been good to you. And he'll be good to those who choose Jesus to be their shepherd. Surely goodness will follow me all the days of my life. But look at this. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. Two major things there that God wants you to know. He wants you to know that you have to have a personal relationship with God. The Lord is my shepherd. And ending it all up, he sums it up like this. If you do that, if the Lord is your shepherd, you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's what happens, my friends, when Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and your shepherd. Thank you for this class. Father, bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again for tuning into this video. The world is changing, some days quicker than any one person can keep up with. There will no doubt be changes ahead. Please monitor the new church website, the Elm Grove Baptist Church Facebook page, and the new EGBC YouTube channel for further updates. We are being bombarded with words like difficult, challenging, uncertainty, unprecedented, unchartered. As Christians, we must rely on our faith and trust in God and his word, the Bible. Here are a few things which we know for certain. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. For I am the Lord thy God, I change not. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. 
Over the coming hours, days, weeks, the current situation will no doubt change, but God will remain the same. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Thank you for your continued support for this ministry. It is incredibly important at this time. We love you, and we are praying for God's comfort and protection in the days ahead. Thank you.